Okay, take it in. Good morning and welcome. I'm Tim and this is Tim BSC. And we're at our old Lady Birth again up in Port Newark. Uh, birth 51. And we are... Hi, right, Tim. All on the All right, very good. Let's call it uh, 0705 underway. I'm going to try to just walk this off, so just let me know how it works. Stand by. Uh, we'll do. So... We need to take this down to the kills and to the other side to con hook. Now what I'm going to try to do is walk this thing off because I've got a barge ahead of me and a tugboat ahead of me and we don't have a lot of room here so what I'm going to try to do is if you remember I've been talking in the last couple of videos about how the walk, how the geometry of the walk works. Um, when we say walk we're talking about lateral movement. So. Um, Generally, you would put the rudder hard to the left, port full rudder, and you'd come ahead on your starboard engine, and you'd back on your port, and that would give you a left twist. Um, when sort of you follow the H and by one watch. Very good. On a uh, when we're walking, we actually do the opposite. We still do a a a head forward on the starboard engine and back in on the port but we put the rudder a little bit to the to the oh, right very good um, now it, it, it depends on what you have if the if the tugboat doesn't have 350 or 400 foot of barge ahead of you then you might put the rudder hard over to the right and the tugboat will go sideways at that point in this case, because there is so much barge ahead of me, and it's a light barge, so it's, it's not, I'm not having to drag it through the water, I'm able to, uh, right well, now I'm using about, I don't know, 10 or 12 degrees of right rudder, and um, as the bow wasn't coming off, I just started backing up a little bit more, and that snapped it off. Very good. So now uh, I've checked in with traffic. i got to let them know that I'm underway. Traffic from the Elk River. River. We are underway at this time. This is our bounce from Big Up Speed, 15 wide, we're just our 10. There you go. Very good. Very good. Good copy at all, thank you. All right, Hunter, come on in and get warm. I think I got it from here. The wind's not blowing. I'll be able to do this all right. All right, bud. So we're into the same time we went to yesterday morning, right? We had a uh, three or four. Yeah, hopefully it won't be the same drill that we did before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what he's referring to is uh, yesterday we had orders to go to the dock we're going to today, and the wind was howling. It was blowing 40 steady, and we saw 54, 56 a couple times. The wind was howling, and we get over there. I couldn't even get the barge pointed into the wind. It took me, I had to go way out in the anchorage to get a whole bunch of real estate to drive as fast as I could to snap it around into the wind. But we finally got it over there, and I got an assist tug to help me, and we put it... We started getting right to the dock, and the tankerman said, Oh, no, we're going to the next dock. So I called my dispatcher, and he goes, No, you're going to that one. I said, All right. And then he goes, Oh, wait a minute. It looks like they just changed on me. Yeah, you got to go to the next one. So we stopped everything. We moved up to the next dock. And that was a whole big deal because the wind was blowing so hard and such. And uh, anyway, we did all that. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, if that wasn't... I mean, we, we got the thing tied up, let the assist tug go, and we went for a half an hour across across the windy harbor, and dispatch calls and says, yeah, they changed their mind, they want it back at that original dock. So, what Hunter and I were going over there was that we were saying that we, hoping that we're not going to do a repeat of what we did yesterday. <laughs> So this thing is coming out much slower than I had uh, hoped for, which is all right. So instead of uh, rotating the bow around counterclockwise, I might keep lifting it up and look behind me and make sure there's a 
ship back there. I might just uh Hi, Jim, back on board. Very good, good job man, thank you. Yes, sir. I think what I'll do is I'll probably get a little bit of angle and start backing up and uh see if I can buy it. The problem there's some interesting hydrodynamics that happens at this slip. I can't really figure out why because this should be all, it should be like a, a channel in here. There should be no tide, but maybe there's some outflow or something. I don't know what it is, but uh, whatever it is, every time, regardless of the wind or anything, every time we back up here, it always wants to set us to the right. So my bow's coming over and I don't have anyone there to watch it. And I probably have a ton of room over there, but just to be on the safe side, I think I'm gonna uh, back up before I, touch it. Now the good news with these these barges here is they have rubber on the bow and on the corners. So that's all stuff that's going to help me if I were to touch the other barge. But I really don't want to touch the other barge. So I'm backing up now. We're coming back at a good clip and I haven't started falling into the dock yet. Should knock on some wood pipe before I say that. <laughs> it's interesting. Is it we have people that watch us from Australia and we have people from uh, Europe. I'm wondering, we say knock on wood here, but I think, is it just Australia or is it everywhere else in the world that says touch wood to uh, make sure that you don't get into trouble? These are the things that keep me up at night. So my bow is getting very, very close to that other barge, but I think we're just going to sneak by. Oh, you know, it's funny because right here it looks like I'm just sneaking by it with the hair of my chinny chin chin. But in reality, it probably, probably had 30 or 40 feet over there. It's just tough because the barge is so up, so far ahead. Once again, the geometry plays into how everything looks. It's it distorted here, field of view. So we're backing up at 5.7 knots, so I want to go all stop and let this thing come around before I uh, <laughs> won't be able to stop it when I get to the other side of the slip here. And 5.7, now it's down to 4.8, but uh, that that would, if this was a loaded barge, I'd never be able to stop it, but because it's a light barge, I, I'm pretty confident that I, I won't have any trouble stopping it. So, once again, an opportunity to touch wood or knock on wood depending on where you're from. Make sure you write in the comments whether you guys, wherever you are, do you touch wood or do you knock on wood? <laughs> okay, down to 2.7 and I still got a couple hundred feet behind me. My rudder's hard over to the right and I got both engines just clutched in gear here so that I'm all ready to go. About the 50% through my turn, so I'm going to hook it up now. Stop the. We'll go now. We're down to point one, point nine, and one point one. Now we're now we're stopped, and we're going to start coming ahead. So I can't keep driving on it too fast, or I'll shoot across the other side of the channel. But we no longer have momentum going the other way, which is wonderful. Barge is spinning around nicely. I always kind of like it after we've had a couple days, three or four days of really bad wind. Then the whole system blows out. It's clear the next morning. The sun comes up. Although it's still pretty frosty out there, it's still awfully nice to see compared to how <laughs> we had white caps in here yesterday. It was it was really nasty. It's always nice when the wind doesn't blow. All right, so we're almost through the turn. I'm going to straighten out my rudder and start applying power. I'm not giving any counter yeah, rudder because yeah, if, if I uh, calculated my turn right, the uh, yeah, that worked out perfectly. I was able to start applying power and have the barge straighten out right when it, we're in the middle of the channel. So every once in a while, I get lucky. So we're 
coming up to a ship on the right hand side here big green ship and it says ever faith on there and this is something that I always have to address in all the comments so I figure maybe we should talk about this um, there are a lot of people that are enthusiastic about maritime shipping and why would you be watching this if you weren't right <laughs> um, unfortunately some people get a little confused um, the evergreen company has green ships and most of their ships probably all of them for all as far as I know all start with ever something um, so many people will see a green ship in this case it's called the ever faith and they will say oh it's good to see that one's not blocking the Suez Canal anymore yeah that was one of many of their ships and uh, so just because it's green and it says ever doesn't mean that it's the same thing. They, the evergreen part is the uh, company. The ever faith is the name of this particular ship. The sun's so bright that you can't even see the screen right now. With my eyes, let alone with the GoPro's eyes. Now, I believe this ship that's up ahead of us here on the right hand side as to um, we're coming in they were docking over there so I don't have to worry about him getting underway and me clogging up the works but this is a good opportunity for me to look with AIS our chart plotter around the corner the traffic said there was nobody coming and indeed that is the case but there is somebody who's going to be popping out right over here on the left uh, but I think it's just a little teeny tug um, the tug that works this area pretty well, so I don't think he's going to be, I won't be a problem for him and he won't be a problem for me. He might have a barge with him, but I think that the traffic would have said something about that if that was the case. And in fact, he's down to 1.4 knots, so he's probably stalling out right there. If he isn't, then he's slowed down for me. So it's all going to work well. Now one of the things I have to consider is that this ship, this container ship up here on the right hand side with the two tugs that are working on it, those tugs are probably working half hooked up right now. And so uh, they're putting a lot of pressure holding the, the ship against the dock while they're putting out the, the lines to hold it in place. And uh, when the, the barge starts getting in all that quick water, you know, the, 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 the wheel wash from the tugs pushing out, um, it's interesting how it happens. When it starts hitting the bow of the barge, the barge will start going this way. Then as it gets to the pivot point, then it hits it and the barge goes the other way. It's not that big a deal because the barge is empty right now. If the barge is loaded down to 13, 14 feet, something like that, it would have much more of an effect on us. And, uh, I'm looking over at that little tug right now. And it looks like he is just holding in, in the, or he's pushing a barge up against the bulkhead. So I'm not in his way and he's not in mine. Just got to watch out for these tugs up here. And in fact, the uh, first tug, I, uh, one of my buddies I used to work with at another company. One of my buddies, I can, I can actually say this. This guy, act, I'd forgot, I'd been so long since I'd been on boats, I'd forgotten how to tie a bowline. And this guy, who's the captain on that boat now, um, I don't know if he's there now, he might be home. You know, but I don't know how our schedules line up. But uh, he actually re-taught me how to tie a bowline. Seems like just yesterday, but probably a long, long time ago. Okay, so the bow is just about coming into the first tug's quick water, so I'm, I'm getting ready to counter that. As soon as I see the bow starting to move, I will give it a little bit of right rudder. Um, now it's starting to go just a little bit, so I give it just a little bit of right rudder. Like I say, it's not that bad because uh, the barge is light, 
but it will have an effect on the tug because the tug is going to be down 13 feet. So now as it starts to push on that, it snaps my bow to the right. But hopefully I'm mitigating that by getting lots of left rudder right now. Now I'm through, I've got to uh, straighten the rudder again and get ready for the same thing to happen. Now this smaller tug over here looks smaller and looks like uh, not quite as big as the other one that my buddy's on. Um, but I, I have a feeling it's got a lot more horsepower. Because this one over here is what they call a tractor tug. Those are actually made in the yard up in Maine. Bay Harbor, Maine. And, uh, they have Maine. And they don't build beautiful tugs. I've never driven a tractor tug. I get that in the, in the comments quite often. People ask me, have I ever driven a tractor tug? And for those of you that aren't, aren't aware of this, what a tractor tug is, is a, uh, you know, a conventional tug like this one will have two propellers, two shafts that go to two propellers and two rudders. And they say stay there, and the only thing that changes is the revolutions per minute on each of the propellers and whether they go front, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise to give forward thrust or backing thrust. Well, a uh, tractor tug, these particular ones have almost like, looks like two outboard motors. They have monsters, you know, very, very big. And actually, I think these are actually made by Rolls-Royce. But they go down there and they can turn 360 degrees. And uh, they, they're, they're some of the most uh, amazing tugs as far as they, they can handle incredibly well. And I always get the thing where everyone says, oh, wouldn't you like to run one of those? Well, first of all, I've never run one. I would love to play with one. And I have a friend that's been a friend of the channel here for two or three years now who uh, he's working over in Sweden now. I, 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 he may be Norwegian or, oh, God, Klaus, I'm so sorry for messing this up. I can't remember if he's Danish or, or Norwegian or he may even be, in fact, Swedish. But anyway, he's, he's a mariner over there, and he runs... Uh, tractor tugs all the time. And uh, before COVID hit, he and I were trying to set it up that I'd go over there and he was going to let me play with the boat that he works on and all that. But I put that off for another day. But anyway, it's one thing that people say all the time is that the first thing you want to do when you run a tractor tug is to throw everything you know about boat handling out the window. You've got to start from scratch. In fact, they don't have a they don't have a steering wheel, they don't have the joysticks like we have. Most of them will have, uh, you know, what I'm calling throttles, but they move 360 degrees, so you can not only adjust how much power you have, but the, the angle of the propeller and the thrust at that point. Um, now, there are some other ones. Uh, any of you saw my video for when I was down in... Uh, Fort Lauderdale doing a SDCW refresher, I did a video where I was hanging out with my, with my friend Captain Zoe who was running the uh, Fort Lauderdale water taxi. And they have a similar situation where it's almost like this outboard motor. And I say outboard, the, the, the engine's an inboard but it goes to a shaft and it goes down there and this thing will move 360 degrees. And instead of having that on the throttle, hers was set up on a steering wheel. So that wherever you would place the steering wheel would be where the propeller would end up when it would turn. So uh, there's a couple of different ways. What I'm trying to get at is there's a couple of different ways that you can set up a tractor tug. And then, of course, there's the Boy Schneider drives and that look like great big squirrel cages. And there are other ones that have them fore and aft and all this sort of stuff. But once it yeah, and I just have to tell you guys, all you guys that ask me all these questions about them, the first answer is, I don't know, speaking out of my element, because uh, I've never run one. Many people will say, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great you'd be able to have so much more maneuverability if you had one of those in the industry that I'm working in here, as in bunkering? And you're absolutely right. Because remember, I can't really have a lot of lateral control. Um, I can push things ahead and pull them back, and I can give a little bit of twist and a little bit of twist, that's about it, where those guys really can put all their horsepower sideways. And uh, that's amazing. 
Um, so yeah, that would be wonderful. But I don't know that it would justify the cost. Remember that as much as we all love tugboats, you and me, um, the people that own tugboats might not be here because of their love of tugboats as much as they are because uh, it's a corporation and corporations are in business to make money. And so many decisions that are made are financially driven. I can't tell you how many people have said that you should have a tractor truck doing all this work. Well, I think you, there's nothing that would say that you couldn't have a tractor tug do this work, but you'd be spending a lot of extra money on the acquisition of a tractor tug and the maintenance and all that sort of stuff um, on something that, yes, it, my job would be much easier. But if you were looking at it from the perspective of somebody that owns the company, it might be better to hire somebody that can do it with a conventional tug so you don't have to pay for all that Rolls Royce uh, Z drives and uh, and the maintenance for all that sort of stuff. You wouldn't have to do all that if you hired somebody with the skills that would be able to do the same job without all that fancy technology. So don't take it wrong. I would love to be able to do that and it would probably make our lives infinitely better. But it is the way it is, and uh, right now, in New York Harbor at any rate, uh, all of the Z-Drive or tractor tugs that you see that operate here are predominantly used just for ship docking. And that's really important because a, a, a ship that's going this way, they might need him to pull him off. Now, if he's doing more than a knot with a conventional tug, the forward if he's move, making forward progress and he wants us to pull him off, that knot of, of forward moment, momentum is going to pull the tug down so it flops alongside. And his pull is really more back than out. Where with a, with a tractor tug, they can just direct their propellers in the way that it will pull them right off regardless of how fast they're... I say regardless. I'm sure there's, a, there's an upper limit to that, but say not being somebody that runs those I couldn't speak to that but uh, but they work phenomenally well for those especially especially for the super large container vessels um, that come into New York and uh, New Jersey all the time and uh, so that's where it really makes sense for companies to spend the money on a tractor tug not so much here now what I'm gonna do is shut off uh, we tried this once before. I'm going to shut off this camera here and shut off the camera out back and uh, see you on the other end.
give you a little room, Jeff. Yeah? VTS, VTS will give you 72 without any questions asked. Uh, 72 hours, is that what you're asking? How long you can be there? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, no, no, no you'll be fine. I mean, you're going to get waked by the fairies, but that's just the way it is, you know? Um, so there's some, some guys that like to break down and make up alongside, but, uh, we usually, we usually just stay right in and uh, and keep an eye on the bush gear, you know? 
steering, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you you get a loaded 50, stay right in the notch. You got a good notch, right? Yeah, stay right in there. You'll be fine. Where, where are you bound for? <laughs> well, you know, you know what I heard? Um, this kind of makes a lot of sense to me that a lot of these companies are filling up all of our barges and paying for our time on the barges because they know that uh, Captain D, Costco Fortune, just keep it tucked if, uh, as we come by, please. If Russia goes to war with the Ukraine, they're gonna as soon as the shots fired, they're gonna stop the gas going to Germany, and then when that happens, all the global prices for oil are gonna go up. So all these oil speculators are filling all of our barges even though all the tanks are full with products so that they can buy it cheap and sell it when the price goes up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Hey, I gotta call this inbound ship, alright man? I'll talk to you later and uh, be safe. Oh yeah, I think you're fine. See you, boo. Bye. Fortune, Elk River. Just get ready to call you, Cap. I'll see you on one whistle. I'll be real tight to the greens. Hey, thanks. Very good.
Hunter, we're getting close. Okay, we're back. So we made it through the kills. Those of you that stuck around for all that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I am going to try to snap this thing around before the six buoy, which I don't know if is a great idea. I tried to snap it around behind the six buoy yesterday, but I had 40 knots of wind, and that was a disaster. So I think because Mother Nature is being much more kind to me today. I'm going to try it this way. It's going to make sense for you. We're coming up, we're right on the con hook range right now. So we're going to be turning to the left all the time and uh, going into this dock, which should be a port side tie up. As expected, getting inside the six buoy was not a problem. My problem now is that I need to get up and over to get around to the what the dock they call five of seven, and the tide is flooding. So, uh, let's see how that looks over there. Sometimes there's, there's an eddy over there, so it does things a little backwards. Theoretically, the tide should be pushing me towards the dock, but uh, I think the eddy is going to be actually pulling me away from the dock, so we'll see what happens. I'm looking at the boom, and I think the booms in between the docks are all supporting my theory, <laughs> which is not good. I'm not happy about that. It's going to be very hard to get there. Hunter, you got me? Yes, sir. Get your line clear. All right. Uh, we should have line handlers here, but uh, we don't know if they're going to be there or not. We also should have some tide holding us to the dock, but it looks like the boom is saying opposite. So um, assuming we've got a little bit of eddy there. So it's going to be hard for me to hold it in there. So I don't know how it's going to work. Whether if, if, we have, if we have dock men, it will be great. But if we don't, let me see if you can try to get a line that I can work into. Let's not worry so much about the spot. Let's worry more about getting us a, a line that I can drive into until somebody shows up. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get you something. All right. I've got an EB working over. Uh, down by another uh, 170 foot ahead, Valley Pass, and this first case on. All right works on one of our boats in Philadelphia and he's over here he's pretty confident he can get a line which I I love that when people have the right attitude what he doesn't know is that this dock has all of its bollards way inside the dock so that's one of the hardest docks to get lines at and that's why they require that when we come in here we set up line handlers so we've done that 
but that doesn't just because we told them that we'll be here at eight doesn't necessarily mean they're actually going to be here. Uh, Jeff, another uh, another fifty more foot ahead, about for case on us right now will be about thirty watts. All right, so looking at that boom there, it looks like this is going to be a really difficult job here for me to hold it in there. So we'll give it a shot. If it doesn't work, we'll just call it. We'll back out and wait for an assist to help us out. All right. We'll do. And my plan is to just put brush up against that boom and push it out of the way. So if something happens, let me know. Like if it breaks or something like that, I need to report that. All right. We'll do. So... You can see the boom is pushed out. Ah, uh, Jim, as of right now, another 20 more foot ahead. Be passing this case on. We get there, it'll be 10 watt. And we'll slide that uh, vendor that was half ass off yesterday is even more half ass off. All right, very good. So, uh, yeah, the tide should be going from right to left, but I think there's an eddy in here, and the eddy is. Ah, uh, Jim, uh, bow passenger now. We've got about uh, still 10 watt. Another. Uh, uh, 30 more foot ahead, but you have coverage on the third to last bank. All right, very good. So I'm going to start trying to slow us down and almost now look like the bow is taking off. Bow's on the ball, basically, bow's 20 wide. You know, right past third to last bank. All right, very good. And uh, make sure that I don't hit that uh, case on up forward. I got a good eye on it right now, but just that's something that we need to be cognizant of. Alright, we'll do. So this is one of those All right, things. Right now, our bow batch with the manifold. Closing easy on the bow about 15 wide. Another 31 foot ahead, bow will be passing the second last case. Very good. So this is one of those things where I gotta come in fast because the tide's pulling me off, but I gotta stop because there's a case on up there that I'll run into if I don't. So right now I'm trying to get the bow over, but the stern is caught in the tide, so I'm going to try to walk against all of it, kind of do a Hail Mary here. Right now you got coverage on the single last case, huh? You still got another, uh, another 40 ahead for that up. Uh, almost steady, 21. All right, looks like I see somebody coming. Make sure uh, if I can't get over there, you have an eye on a heaving line to throw, because like I say, I'm fighting the tide here pretty good. Now I want to bring the bow over so you can get a line, and in order to walk everything over and get the barge stopped, I need to give more reverse than forward. So the problem is, is that when I do that, I don't stop. <laughs> but now I've got it stopped, so I can add some more power. You see a guy coming on the gangway? How are we doing? Are we closing on that? No, sir, so steady, 21. All right. Now, he says we're holding steady, but it looks like we're getting better, and that means that we're going backwards, actually. So I can add some more power, and that will push us over. All right, we're closing down. Nice, easy, about 15 watts. Also, we're All right, good deal. Thank you. I'm going to start working ahead all the time, so stand by. Yes, sir. So I'm basically walking over here. I'm trying to keep the bow at a tighter angle than the stern so that he can get a line. Once he gets a line, I'll be able to drive into that line and all will be good. I'm feeling a lot more confident right now because I'm hooked up, which, me which means I'm, I'm, I'm out of power. I don't have any more power to give, but I'm gaining all the time. All those things make me feel good. I just... Right, Jim, even off, just over, bow glass and down, 10 wide. That's right now, bow has no fender. Okay, very good. So now I came hard right so that the stern comes over and we flatten out in the bow that he says... All right, Jim, we're standing over the first line now. Bow starts to fall back out, another uh, about 5 wide. This right now we will uh, eventually hit that forward cell. Oh, okay, so I need to back up. No, sir, no, sir, I didn't have to uh, wrong. Uh, you'll have coverage on the forward sail and another 20 foot ahead. Uh, oh, okay, very good, good, good. Then we got a headline out now. We're going to wrap her up. Uh, our uh, forward speed is good. Uh, time to come tell you where we are. I got a feeling we're right on spot right here, so I'll keep trying to pressure up against the dock. Everything's going to land all right? 
Alright, you got that thing made off? Yes, sir. It wraps off and the line's coming tight. You are good to close your door, bud. Alright, I'll do it nice and slow. If the bow gets like it's going to get into something without a, you know, a fender, let me know and I'll, I'll stop it. Alright, yeah, we'll do That's right now. We'll start with the now. Alright, good deal. Nice job up there. That's exciting. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pull that off. We, we were right at the limit there. Like I say, if I had just a little bit of wind or a little bit of tide, we have both the wind and the tide against us. All right, now we're still about 20 more foot ahead, but uh, we're still about 10 wide, uh, 10 wide off of that. Yeah, don't slip anything. Wait until you tell me when we're all when we're all flat, then I'm going to have you slip me 10 foot ahead. So now that we have that line up there in the bow, the, we're pulling ahead on that, and that's pulling the bow over, and I have the rudder hard over to the to the starboard there, keeping the stern up into the tide. And I say the tide, that would be an ebb tide coming this way, but it, the tide is flooding right now. Start going down, 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 down. We'll start our bow and uh, pass our stern. We just pull her out a little bit. All right, very good. Alright, good eyes, man. Our bow is up again, starting off about one wide. Alright, you ready to, to slip ahead? I just want to all stop, or you want me to keep working and uh, you uh, slip it with me working? Yeah, I gotta keep working clutch in my body. Very good. Do your thing. So, yeah, with that up there, me trying to get over it, that gets over that way. It start, as I start. Very good. Okay, make sure I don't hit that uh, dolphin up ahead. Yeah, it's on that check. Now we can't see it because it's underneath the bow, but there's a. Uh, Jim is right now, it's about 50 foot in front of us, so we should be good unless it's packed with me. All right, you let me know when. Uh, you either let that thing go or uh, let me know and I'll go, I'll stop for you. All right, good. Do your thing. So he's slipping us ahead now. Tankerman has another line on the stern. The problem is if the tankerman tightens up that one, sometimes the tankerman don't always understand. If the tankerman wraps that one up without telling us, It'll make it'll pull that and the bow will come flying out. Still about forty wise that case box. Very good. But this tankerman's been around the 
been around for a long time, so he should know his stuff. But just because someone's been doing the job for a long time doesn't always make them uh, without making mistakes. <laughs> I'm an example of that. All right, Jim, let's go stop, uh, stop for a second. We're on about 10 watts left. All right, tell them to wrap it up, and I'll drive into that. All right, watch the bow. Is the bow cool? Yes, sir. The bow is good. We got coverage up there. All right, good deal. All right, I'm slowly coming into this. We'll flatten out. All right. So as we had Here, to... Right, about one watt. Very good. As we had to move up the dock with all this up again. current pulling us off here, as soon as we let go of the line, we start falling off the dock. And so we don't know that we're in where we need to be, but we've had them wrap up the lines so we can get flat on the dock again, reevaluate, and adjust from there. How are we looking, Hunter? Yeah, we're looking good for Spock. Then once we get in there, it turns off about four wide and close them slowly. So we're going to go ahead and fire it. All right, good job. So while they're doing that, I'll check out with traffic. Somebody beat me to it. Traffic, Elk River. Elk River. We're all secure. Five of seven. Con Hook. You can check me out. Thank you so much. Check down, Captain. Yeah. All right. So they're tying it up, and you guys always want to see everybody tie it up, but as <laughs> I keep saying, it's a long way to see all that. There's not a whole lot to see, so. I don't know if that's your thing. Have at it, but uh. Say there isn't much to see here, but uh, anyway, that's that. By the time you see this, I have a couple of videos out ahead of you, so I don't know where it's going to be. But by the time you see this, I don't know if I'll have already told you or not, but I have some big, big news big changes for the channel, and changes for me, and changes for my life. So stick around. And no, no, we're not shutting the channel down, and um, I haven't retired. Believe me, I wish I could, but I'm not ready for that yet. But anyway, uh, good things are happening. And uh, as much as it's difficult to embrace change, change usually is a good thing. So uh, stick around. Maybe I'll, uh, if you subscribe to the channel, maybe I'll probably put a special thing up so it'll pop up when I'm ready to let everyone know what's going on. But uh, cross your fingers. Thank you so much for watching. You guys stay safe. Big shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. If, uh, you guys are uh, one of those that aren't part of the patron crew. If you'd like to come over and be, become part of the patron crew, you can go over to patreon.com. I'll put a link in the description. And uh, it might behoove you to uh, check out my other channel. It's nothing to do with tugboats, and it's uh, about me uh, making the transition from going as a professional mariner for somebody who's just sailed very little in my life to uh, making a transition over to sailboats and uh, learning the whole physics and geometry of sailing and living on my boat and right now we're in Puerto Rico and uh, hopefully one day I, I, just, by the time you guys see this I'll be getting ready to sail the boat back to New England again but the hope is to one day maybe go across the Atlantic over to Europe and then maybe one day uh, head for the canal and 
do my circumnavigation. But anyway, it's SV Paquita. I'll put a link in the description as well. Please, if you haven't checked it out, come over. Help me get that channel off the ground. Thank you so much. You guys uh, rule. And be safe, and I'll see you on the one.